I remember I was in work and I got a phone call after the second scan. And I remember just screaming out loud that it was going to be a baby boy and I was um, over the moon. Sol decided to come into the world in an awkward position. A particular kind of blood clot had formed in his upper arm. You've got about two hours before the limb starts to die. He didn't stand a chance to keep his left hand. If someone had told me two years ago that I would be an engineer by profession, I would have looked at them and told them that they were mad. When he came home from the hospital, his left arm was no longer moving at all. That wasn't good enough for my son, so I decided to do something about it myself. I rushed into the kitchen, took a kitchen sponge and just tacked it onto his arm lightly. And literally within 10 seconds, he lifted it up, started banging the toys. And from that day onwards, he was using both arms. My heart just lifted. There has never been a better time to become an engineer. The biggest challenge for Sol was to be able to accept a grabbing artificial arm when it would be finally given to him at the age of three. Okay. I'd seen lots and lots of stuff about kids rejecting prosthetics because it had been left too late and that just spurred me on to try and do something myself. I started making prototypes with off-the-shelf components, washers and the screwdriver handle, gluing bits of plastic and tubes together. And I realised actually the cheapest way of doing all of this is 3D printing. I came to Bangor University to see if I could get some help. I had to find a way of generating a socket that will completely fit and hug around the stump of the arm. Somebody mentioned that the Xbox Kinect has scanning function. I wait for Sol to go to sleep, go into his room. Kate would hold his arm steady and in about five minutes, I'd have a scan. While I've been worrying about some of the things that Sol isn't getting, it pales in comparison to what's available, for example, in South America, where children are not given any prosthetics until they're in their teens. If I wanted to completely slash the costs and reduce the time it takes to make these things, what I've decided to do is to trial a process of home scanning. So parents use an Xbox Connect scanner to scan their child's limb, send me the file. I will then model a socket and mail it out to them for test fit. If that fits snugly, then I can send them the whole prosthetic arm. The same process is now being tested with 20 families all around the world. And I think this is the shape of the future. Once I've got the socket fitting and the arm was the right size, I took the blue arm into Sol's room and he slid it onto his stump and he actually said the words, it fits properly. And he just wanted to go to school and show it off to all his friends. And that's when I knew I'd done it right. I would love to have gone back in time and focused on engineering. There has never been a better time to become an engineer. If you have an idea and you have the motivation to do it, then you can do it. You can change the world. <laughs>